Teachers of Reddit, what are some signs that a student is being abused or lives in a toxic environment? I taught life skills special ed at a middle school. The class were the kids who need to learn to eat with a fork, tie their shoes, etc. Had a little guy with Down syndrome who started bringing bound and gagged Barbie dolls to school. A mask with duct tape over the mouth. I was the person he confided to that a neighbor had been sexually abusing him with some pretty creepy SM stuff, fine if you're into that consensually. But this kid could not give meaningful consent. The school social worker and I made the appropriate calls and made sure the kid and family had the supports they needed. You can ask younger children closed ended questions but they should be asked with a qualifier for validity. Did they touch you in your private area? Yes. We all live in the moon. Right? Yes. Child's recount would be considered unreliable. The big thing if you suspect child abuse is to call a report to DCF. A report does not automatically result in criminal charges. It does usually result in an investigation of some sort to determine if there is an issue. Another thing to note is that very often sexual abusers will conduct the abuse in the presence of other adults. If it's common for a child to sit on a lap of one parent under a blanket or pillow, be extra aware. They do this because, outside of the thrill, it makes it easy for the other adults to believe them because I was in the room. There's no way that happened. The child is making this up. As a general rule of thumb, children don't make up stories about being sexually assaulted. I was taught in mandatory reporting training to not ask questions. If you suspect abuse, report facts observations like the ones you've stated and leave the questions investigating for the authorities. It's not for us to determine whether or not abuse is happening and if you're asking leading questions to the child you could actually hinder an investigation. Your sixth point is so so important. The asking open ended questions bit. I remember my mom used the did ABC touch yours this format and I felt so ashamed I felt like I had done something wrong and I wasn't able to admit it at all. It makes so much sense now reading it as a guideline. Thank you for putting it out there. 3. I remember a little girl that I taught during a summer program. Out of nowhere she had bruises down her thighs and couldn't walk properly. Talked to my supervisor and she set up an appointment with the parents. They were just as worried and sat together trying to see who she had been spending time with. While they were going through their schedule they realized the girl had just started horse riding lessons. I was wrong and it was embarrassing. But I would still rather be wrong and say something. Pay attention to the signs. And if you see anything that looks wrong. Speak up. As someone with years of law enforcement experience and dozens of child abuse cases under my belt. I completely disagree with your first numbered point. If it's come to a criminal investigation, neither law enforcement nor the courts will have any issue with a kid referring to their monkey, butt, whiner, or any other nickname they may use for their genitals. We just ask them to point to their and once we're on the same page, we use their word for it. Many kids who are verbally abused will do the same to peers they think less of, or to younger kids. If a kid is calling someone horrible things, often things that kids should not say like swear words or violent threats, for a minor offense like being annoying. They learned that from someone at home. You can tell the difference between learning it from an adult and just repeating something they heard on TV because they will genuinely really mean it and you can hear it in their voice. Quoting something they heard on TV doesn't usually have a context the way that genuine rage does. Honestly. A kid who is just in rage all the time is a huge red flag for me. Especially if they're under like. 10. Thanks to online school, I can just look and see. One sign is constant full blast music or full blast healing or screaming in the background. Kids or adults fighting or yelling the background. Kids fight the student trying to learn on camera. My cousin had a kid in her class whose parents were screaming at one of the kid's siblings in the background back when classes first went online. The kid forgot to mute himself when he first logged in. And the teacher apparently looked very worried. Even after the kid apologized and muted his camera. My cousin said it was very disturbing. And a lot of her classmates were shaken up by it. Reading all these makes me go why didn't my teachers see the signs? Double quote. 
I'm just noticing a lot of these signs in the most awful people from my school. Makes me feel bad about them. It wasn't their fault to be assholes. Former child abuse prosecutor here in addition to clothing and hair hygiene. Also look for age inappropriate hygiene and bathroom issues. For example. A 9 year old who wets themselves. Often abused people, of any age, will attempt to make themselves unattractive without fully knowing they are doing so. Hoping it will end abuse. Every child will have a messy phase. But if the messy phase is extreme. It's time to call a doctor. With wetting. Either the kid has a bladder infection or something more sinister is going on. Swedish teacher here. In Sweden. My mom was a principal for almost 30 years at a school for kids aged 6-12. So she'd seen some bad tea during her years. She didn't tell me everything because of non-disclosure agreements on her part. But she did tell me some things. One such thing was a young girl from Somalia. She and her parents went back to Somalia on vacation and when they got back the girl told one of the staffers that she had been cut with scissors down there. Now. Female genital mutilation is quite common in Somalia and Eastern Africa. And extremely illegal in Sweden. So. The laws forces you to call child protective services if you even suspect something's afoot. So the staffer did and the CPS and police show up and place the girl in protective custody and the parents are arrested and held in custody. The girl goes to a hospital and is examined and it turns out the whole thing was a lie. The parents are furious and remove their kid from that school and threatens legal action. As far as I know nothing came of it. Where I live there is currently a case of a Muslim kindergarten girl claiming she was sexually abused. But the investigation found none of what she said to be true. The room she described does not exist. The person she described does not exist etc. The mother had brought it all to attention by putting a video with the claims online. The father has now spoken out death threats to all the teachers working at that kindergarten. So things have escalated quite terribly and it's obviously turned into a huge racism debate as well. Some of them don't want to get touched by other people. Handshakes okay but when it comes to hugs from other students or putting your hands on their shoulders in class while explaining something for example. They'll act very shy and they'll try to avoid such contact. I never saw a behavior like this from one of my own students but a workmate once told me this from one of his students. I looked it up and it seems to be common for victims of RP or abuse. Sorry for any mistakes. English isn't my first language. Edit. There are many comments from people who also don't like physical contact and are neither a victim of abuse or have autism or something like that. I didn't meant to be offensive to someone and I didn't wanted to say that everyone who avoids physical contact is a victim of abuse. The original question asked for possible signs for abuse and avoiding being touched can definitely be one. Sorry for the misunderstanding. One sign of physical abuse, including severe beatings, is when students dress to cover every inch of their bodies. It's especially noticeable during times of warmer weather when most students are wearing far less. These abused students have scars so searing that they can't sit back in a chair normally due to the pain from sores. Other telltale signs include occasional facial bruises or wounds to to lips where they've been punched. Not a teacher but I did a short course on the signs of abuse a couple years ago when I was a reliever in an early child care center. Something I remember from the course is that children have an area referred to as a triangle of safety. Roughly, and from memory, it includes the inside of the mouth. The cheeks. Around the ear and the neck. Any cuts. Burns or bruising act. In this triangle should be investigated. I recommend looking into this further if you are interested. I am just doing my best with what I remember. My sisters and I also grew up in a severely abusive home and we reacted differently too like you and your sisters. My oldest sister acted out violently and ended up in juvenile jail for beating me up and skipping school. She also turned overly sexualized because she was struggling to cope with her RP by our babysitter. As a result of her RP she turned to sexually abusing my sister and I which we never dealt with even still in my family. I turned inward with my anger. And targeted myself. I still struggle with feeling of worthlessness and anger. I'm the sensitive one. 2. 
and I can relate to the withdrawn feeling during school and struggling to form friendships. My younger sister started keeping everything in and this became a coping mechanism she used growing up, and still today. I had a terrible experience as a student who was abused at home. At one point I had a black eye every month or so. Once I had to do pee. E in shorts and I had a huge black spot on my inner thighs which spread from the genitalia almost to the knee. I always told people I fell from my bike. Broke crying out of nowhere regularly. My grades were awful and I had to repeat one entire year. I was a teenager and actually asked for help to the school counselor. Which, after listening to me, said, since your younger sister is involved, we'd have to act and call the police. If you don't want, we can just pretend we didn't have this talk. I was scared so nothing actually happened. She left me with a bunch of sort of propaganda pamphlets. She was into politics in my school town, asking me to give them to random people. Teachers kept on treating me like a rebellious teenager with behavioral problems even though they made many talks about speaking up to the teacher if we had problems at home or we were being abused. This was Milan, Italy, 5 to 10 years ago. Now I can usually recognize anyone who had been beaten or abused at home when they were kids in a short conversation. Writing prompts usually bring out some strange stuff. Also, behavior with peers. Mayo I would never have the courage to write something other than the most simple story for a writing prompt. Teachers judge hard. Good for the kids who can. Not a teacher but there is this one guy who used to go my school whose home life seemed pretty hostile with the extremely cynical things he'd say and do and the way he got enraged and ran out of class all the time. Might have been a mental disorder or something but I don't think his home was very welcoming either. Wife says a couple of kids parents refuse to turn on their webcams for lessons. So she literally has two kindergarten age kids she's been teaching virtually for two months. Never seen them. Not even a pic sent to her. She says given other limited interactions with the parents it seems like lots of red flags on this one but no real protocol yet as to how to find them help or just confirm everything is cool at home. Theater teacher, 6-12th grade. I can get pretty close to almost all my students but it's the ones who want to really talk or tell me stories that I feel need me to listen. And I've been teaching long enough to know that if kids want to talk to me, say during lunch or not after class, then they are reaching out but may not know what they are reaching about. 10 years ago I had a student, super funny talented actress, whose dad was making her stay up all night to work at his shitty low rent motel. I knew something was up because she was not only always tired. She was super mean. It was only after I went to drop off her homework, all of her teachers. I didn't give her any, that I was able to see her home life. She lived at a motel. I won't go into its reputation but you can imagine. She still played Titania in the spring play. Hoarding and saving food is a big indicator that they're not being fed enough at home. Or that their parents are controlling their eating habits in an unhealthy way. Also children who consistently use harsh language against other children and engage in bullying can be a sign that they're being mistreated. But this can also simply be a sign of some other unresolved emotional issue. Not a teacher but a former abused kid who no one saw. I was really angry as a kid. I wouldn't hit or bullied anyone. Actually I was also bullied. I had problems concentrating in class and once in second grade my teacher took me outside to talk and I told her how I was so angry at so and so I want to throw an eggs at them. At 7 yo guys. Also I once didn't do my math homework at 4th grade and the teacher said she'd have to call my mom and talk to her. And I started crying my soul out, I hate crying in front of PPL, and saying how she would kill me. So the teacher finally broke and said she won't call my mom. But she also did nothing. If a kid is that afraid of their parents. Believe them. I keep thinking what if someone would have asked me. Just ask. Maybe I could have said something. Maybe I wouldn't have to go through all of it and end up where I did now. Maybe I could have had somewhat of a normal life. But no one ever did. So I guess I'll never know. Not a teacher but my GF is. She had a little girl last year that would ask to go home with her because she didn't want to go to her own home. 
It was a bad situation where 7 kids were living in a 2 bedroom apartment. Apologizing a lot. Flinching when someone's hand is raised. Being yelled at. All our noises. Avoiding confrontation or eye contact but that could also be something else. Willing to make a fool of themselves for attention. Acting out. Etc. Kids wearing long sleeves and pants in 80 plus degree weather to cover bruises. Excessively apologizing. Not being able to stand up to bullies. Not being able to differentiate mature subjects from appropriate subjects at a young age. My teachers sucked. Band teacher here. A lot of times when teaching kids in beginning band how to play their instruments early on you have to touch various body parts. Hands of course. Arms. Hips and shoulders for getting them into proper posture alignment. I always ask before I touch anywhere is it okay if I touch your? Almost all kids say yes. I've had two that have said no. One was a student with autism and did not want to be touched. And the other turns out was being abused at home. It's not a guarantee of course. But often a sign. Bruises. Not just any bruises too. There are two types. Type 1 is bruises that kids get just from being a kid. They bonk their head. Scrape their knee. Fall on their face forearms. Etc. Type 2 are bruises where it would be hard to get a bruise. Like torso. Back. Upper arm. Thigh. Etc. Those areas indicate that they were hit with a heavy object of some sort. Sometimes. And I mean rarely, children have grab marks on their upper arm. Which is a sign they were grabbed forcibly. I work in childcare and this post makes me sad. I have to ray up my mandated reporter training soon and it's really hard to read some of the awful things people do to children. Not a teacher but if a student doesn't want to go home for snow days that should be a red flag. A close friend of mine hates snow days as her father drank. Was abusive. And also made his kids do lots of manual labor around the house. Edit. Hated. Thankfully my friend is out of high school and in a better household now. I'm wondering how I managed to get through 5 years of schooling without social services visiting my parents or being sectioned. My parents never abused me. They're kind and loving. For the record. But I was a walking red flag parade in my teens. Sometimes kids emotionally abuse themselves. I'm a lot better now. Thanks. It just goes to show how much schools have moved on on 30 years. Thank goodness. My partner's mum is a teaching assistant in a classroom. She said one of the most worrying things she hears is can I tell you a secret? A lot of the time it's very innocent but it always sets off alarm bells first. I was a substitute teacher in college and there was a week where I was subbing for a teacher's aide in a kindergarten classroom to help her with a few of the special needs kids in the class. There was one kid who got sent home with food the teachers put together every Friday to take home to his family since they were very low income. But the saddest part was that this kid had no language skills and you couldn't understand what he was saying. He would get so frustrated because he couldn't convey anything to us because his parents clearly never put in the time to teach him to read, write, or even talk. He had the language skills of a 2 year old toddler at the age of 5 and it broke my heart. No telling what damage that could do to his future development. Teacher here just chiming in. Location matters a lot with this. While all this is good advice and as a teacher you should keep your eye out for. Take note of your school and the area you teach in before making any judgments. For example. You're teaching in a rural part of Vietnam some kid hasn't done his homework and is asleep in your class. This is happening a lot. While this is normally a huge red flag in the west or built up areas. There's a very high chance that he didn't do his homework and is asleep in your class because last night and this morning before school he was working on his family farm trying to help support his family. If he falls asleep. You let him sleep. He needs it. I now work in a very highly held academic part of Tokyo and I have some kids fall asleep in my class. Look into their home life and find they go to two or three different schools on top of. Ballet. Swimming. Piano. Some sports. Weekend classes or juku. You let those little guys sleep a bit too. They really need it. 
from my experience teaching middle schoolers for the last decade. They smell, particularly of cigarette smoke, weed, or just general, unbearable, B.O. They either never miss a day, when it's clear they should because they're obviously sick, or they miss school at least two times a week, because their parents can't be bothered to get them there. They either avoid adults like the plague, will literally run away from any authority figure, or are very clingy to adults. And on the more extreme end are things like wetting themselves, sign of sexual abuse, and showing a severe lack of empathy. Typically the child will be afraid to go home. Especially if they have a bad day. They may look for reasons to stay later at school. The safe space. Such as getting in trouble and receiving weeks of detention and weekend detention. Think bender. Comma from breakfast club. If you approach and they flinch they are afraid of adults doing something. If you raise your hand to speak and they flinch they are used to adults hitting them. If they flee from an altercation with you as a teacher they are used to arguments leading to violence against them. Not a teacher but I was from an abusive toxic home and I behaved very poorly in school. None of my teachers ever picked up on it. I just spent a lot of time expelled. In isolation. Detention. I knew that I could take out my frustrations at school without fear of physical punishment. Being the aggressor gave me a sense of control and power. I would hurt other students. Pinch them. Pull their hair. Pull out their chair as they were about to sit down. As I got older this changed to some time attacking other students if we ended up arguing. I acted very inappropriately towards male members of staff and I was very cruel towards female members of staff. I had no sense of boundaries and would often look through teachers desks. Handbags and even move or hide their stuff to irritate them. I feel awful about my behavior now. Even reached out to some of the people I was mean to just to apologize. I wish a member of staff had picked up on it but most of the time it was just punishments. I was just a naughty kid. Not a teacher but a volunteer football coach. Nearly all the most aggressive players, and I mean basically violent players. You immediately see why it is from their parents. Particularly dads. I think their behavior in a sporting context is a really good indicator. Dirty clothes. Bad smell. Sleeping in class often. Food hoarding. Seemingly random outbursts. Triggered by small things. Anger issues. ETC. I'm a school counselor. So I'm fortunate that the kids I've had to report to CPS trust me enough to just tell me. It's frustrating when all the signs are there but CPS doesn't feel there's enough evidence to do anything about it. I developed a tick. For years. I would rip out all my eyebrows and eyelashes. Half the time I didn't realize that I was doing it. Because I lived with my abuser and was so stressed out and terrified all the time. When I was 17. I finally moved in with a friend to get away from them. And people started telling me they knew all along that something was wrong. But no one ever said anything. No one ever took action. Even when I tried to come forward on multiple occasions. I'm begging you guys if you see something. Say something. Not a teacher. But I worked with kids in a restorative justice program. Basically community service. And there would be kids who would have so many hours they would come in after school and weekends for months. We had some kids who would do something petty and stupid literally weeks before they were done. Despite being fairly successful in the program. It was because coming in every day and having staff ask about their life. Make sure they had lunch every day and give some structure to their life was something they craved and didn't have at home. They would self sabotage in order to keep it. It was so sad. Imagine how bad your home life has to be to choose do court ordered manual labor rather than be at home. Listen to how they talk about themselves. Most kids who are just insecure will parrot off things their loved ones say about them my mum says I have beautiful eyes but kids who don't hear that stuff will either say nothing or say very demeaning things about themselves. Also on a sexual abuse side. Listen to the words they use. Sexy. Hot or even things such as I have a beautiful tummy legs etc. And also when you compliment them. Their reaction says a lot. Their refusal to believe. Or eagerness to please you once you compliment them for further compliment says a lot. 
bruises with really flimsy explanations. Pulled hair. Bathroom issues. Knowledge of adult stuff far beyond their age. Those are the few that I recall from training. Hey. I just got this course. So basically. Bad habits attracts bad habits. Students that don't like school. Drink alcohol. Smoke, tobacco or weed. Or have any habit that can lead to dangerous behavior tends to go further down and are often from poor conditions. So if they brag about getting drunk yesterday every week. You might have to investigate. The one child I've had contact with. Where we suspected abuse. Frequently soiled himself and rubbed it on the walls. Apparently that's a big sign. When we'd clean him up he'd have bruises and marks on his abdomen. He'd also talk about how angry his daddy got. We're mandatory reporters and once it was called to attention he was pulled out of the center. Not a teacher but speaking with knowledge on the subject. Kids or even teens in abusive households will be meaner and verbally harsher to their peers. They will be unconsciously mean and hurtful. Looking back after reading the comments. I recognize a bunch of these trays from my classmates in grade school, elementary school I think. Dot. I hope they're in a better place now. Bad reactions to certain movements. Like jumping if you're behind them or acting weird when pointing at them. Just random stuff like that. It could be signs of physical abuse. First you gotta see is his her posture. Then subtly observes is her speech patterns. Most bullied students have broken speeches and most of them speak so quiet you can barely hear their words. And lastly. Every time during class. He she is always the one being the butt of the joke. Hope this helps. I'm not a teacher but a professional that told me a few things that are sometimes hard to spot due to them not being signs of physical trauma. The kid doesn't blink. It was explained to me that it was something to do with threat response. If a child is in constant fight flight freeze. You will see this sort of behavior in them. It's often construed as the kid being strange and staring at other kids but they are scanning their environment the way they've been hardwired to due to abuse. Grades won't be stellar either. It's hard to concentrate on study when there are much more pressing concerns and fears. Restlessness anxiety related behaviors like constantly fidgeting. Extreme hypertension due to panic triggers. Lying about things that are very inconsequential to their family. Egg. Drinking the last of the milk. Using a blank tone of voice to tell you they dislike school vacation. Esp while living in a typical. Clean. Middle class home. Telling adult strangers way too much personal information and or testing the adult ability to hold their secrets. Missing class often. Like 50% of the time where 80% attendance is necessary, there are consequences unless they are sick or have to participate in a certain activity where a professor's notice is required. These are usually bright students too. I learned about unpleasant home situations from their classmates. My students were legal adults of age so I did not intervene but I would try to talk to my students directly if they needed any help and that's all I could do. I was only a substitute. This is their advisor's job. I have students that when asked what they were proud of said staying out of the way which is not as dramatic as some of the abuse before. But probably suggests some sort of issues at home. Or possibly a low self esteem or mental disorder on the student's part. Hard to say. Another thing a student mentioned was he never given a moment alone at home. Which isn't as indicative. But I can see that causing stress as I definitely need space from family. Not a teacher but a student here goes. This year we had one new student begin will name A. They were very shy and really not one to chat. I texted them on Viber to see why they're so down and they told me everything. They had anxiety and depression for 5 years now and have been self harming. I asked them if their parents were abusive but she said that they weren't. So I asked them and said it just happened. Really don't know how you get depression and anxiety just like that and I talked to them more but they didn't want to speak more and well then she moved class and blocked me. I don't know but I dk. Sorry for bad English. Probably gonna get buried but I dk. A once gregarious kindergarten stopped smiling and playing. I taught several of her brothers and she was the only daughter. 
I'd called CPS on the family over the years because the boys hadn't been cared for properly with impacted wax in their ears. Their home was filthy and they were unkempt. But this little girl was a joy and then a zombie. We learned that a 21 year brother who had been sent out of state had returned and was. Well you know. He immediately confessed. Went to jail. During parent teacher conferences. The father and other older. Adult brothers came to my room and threatened me. They also went to the teachers of the younger sons. The adults were banned from school and eventually the estranged mother got her children back from the evil father. It was a horribly painful experience for all. The father had abused the mother years before and kicked her out of the home. Last time I saw the girl she was happy and excited to see me. She had spent a few years angry at me for ruining her family. I once had a student that was trying her best in the first period but would get increasingly unfocused and irritated up to a point where a minor annoyance would lead to a huge temper tantrum. One day I brought apples and sweet bread to class that had been left over after a field trip and offered her some. That day she stayed focused and happy for the whole day and I learned that nobody fed her in the morning or bothered to prepare a snack or give her some coins to buy something for herself. The poor girl was just hangry. Once I connected these dots I also realized why her breath would smell awful sometimes. She had an empty stomach. My point is. Major mood swings, and bad smells, can be indicative of negligence. Secondary. If a student doesn't care about content and doesn't seem happy about getting a good grade. Just relieved. I've seen students almost break down when earning a poor grade on an assessment knowing the pending verbal psychological abuse coming. One student, living with his father and six hours from his mother, was swore at and told he wouldn't see his mother for Christmas because he had a C. The kid cried in my classroom after school and poured his heart out about not having seen his mom for three months. Berating a child and withholding seeing his other parent for a grade? Asterisk. High expectations are great. High expectations without support. However, in this case, emotional, put undue stress on students, resulting in a cycle of anxiety that can permeate their lives. I'm 16 years old and just finished my ICGSEs. A student in my cohort came into class with whiplashes on his arm and neck. After questioning him, I discovered that his parents used a cane to whip him because he forgot one assignment. This student is very reliable and always turns his work in without fail. My parents are diplomats and we had only been stationed in Malaysia for a month. Turns out that this is fairly common and all the other students saw nothing of it. Their bad behaviors skyrocket when they get back from long holidays. Every single time. It shows there is instability or neglect apathy from parents. They tend to be the parents that get annoyed when you try to speak to them about their kid for anything. That Ishii tells you that Ishii is being bullied. But allows you dot do crap about it cause. Well. Kids do that. But when Ishii fights back you give him her detention because you are a useless piece of shit. Sorry for the rant but I hate how most teacher don't give a crap about students being bullied. If you are not one of them. Thank you. Close bracket. This is probably going to get lost in all the other comments. But in the UK. Get in touch with your local community associations or local charities. They often run free accredited courses like child protection where you can learn some of the not so obvious tells or child abuse. One of the uncommon tells is being incredibly biddable and wanting to please. This was my tell. I constantly wanted adults to be proud of me so I always tried my best. Went out of my way to help or do something. Even if it meant I would get hurt in the process. My clothes were always clean. I was always tidy. There was no physical signs of abuse. But I had that need to be what everyone wanted me to be. I used to teach Chinese students online. And rather than seeing a sign. It would just be the parent outright screaming at them in the middle of a lesson if they got something wrong. Horrible to witness and then have to carry on with a smile. And if reported to admins. They say it's not within their power to tell the parent how to raise a child. They are just the one paying for the service. One that I've only seen once in my career. But was a HRMMM. This is weird thing about a kid was that they would stare off and completely zone out. 
For minutes at a time. Could be during work they want to avoid. Yes. But also during universally fun things like Christmas concerts or while outside playing during recess. It was so bizarre. I wondered if they were having seizures at one point. Turned out. This child had PTSD symptoms from watching her parents physically and verbally fight before they separated when the child was 6. I had to relinquish all control of that one to the school psychologist, who was wonderful. But I don't know the details, because my husband worked with one of the parents. Reading all the things shared here are interesting. But is also disturbing and very traumatic. Me as a teenager. Make me think why would people see kids as something sexual. It is very disturbing indeed. But a reality that I have to accept and avoid. Over and under reacting. Freaking out and apologizing for being 5 minutes late or nonchalantly arriving at 30 minutes late. A guy being uncomfortable changing his shirt unless alone or in a stall or something or the guy who always walks around the locker room 100% naked. In both of these situations. Both of these kids could have suffered some sort of trauma or could be living in a toxic environment. When a kid asks to stay after to talk to you. You drop everything and listen. It is hard for them to open up sometimes. If they trust you enough to share. Then you need to be a safe place and willing to be an advocate for them. I have had many students ask if they could just talk for a minute. Especially my high school students. It reminded me what was really important. The physical and mental health of my kids. I have taught secondary ESL for over 7 years. It is a hard adjustment for them to navigate not just high school and difficult life situations. But also to do so learning new cultures. Customs. And language. My advice to all teachers. Sit down and listen. We never really know what our kids are going through. I was bullied at the school and nobody did anything about it. It was only when I started high school. In a different city. That I realized just how much the bullying had impacted me. I would get comments like I'm not going to bite your head off I guess I was cringing when people talked to me. I had body language that was submissive etc. I was bullied from kindergarten up until grade 7. And I think everyone just thought that my behavior was normal for me. Little 7 year old behaving manipulatively. They don't have the abstract reasoning abilities to do that. What they have is the ability to replicate how their parents speak to them. Edit. I just looked back at this. And I feel like I should say. Kids can normally act a bit manipulatively. But I mean manipulatively is in a way that the hundreds of kids I've worked with never behaved. I volunteered at a preschool daycare for kids in rough situations. A thing that always stood out to me was how typical childhood pretend play acting seemed off. For instance when playing house one child would place a toy phone in his waistband similar to how a person hides a gun and when you he got upset he would take out the toy phone and place it against another child's or teacher's head like a gun. The other notable behavior would be how they responded to male teachers. When playing house or family some boys would be extremely protective of the female teachers or girls from the adult male teachers. Overly clingy is a sign of neglect. I saw it with my students. Apparently I did it as a child. Thanks mom. And usually there is another sibling involved that needs more attention than the other. Don't forget the subtle mental and emotional abuse of an educated parent with narcissistic personality disorder. Often the abuse survivors in these households are masters of hiding their trauma. When I was a daycare teacher my class was the toddlers so 2 years olds and the occasional 1 year old. There was one boy in specific that knew the word BTCH and loved to say it as well as constantly kept trying to hurt the only girl in the class. I had to be with her almost constantly because if I wasn't that 2 years old boy would put her in a chokehold. I'll never forget the first time I saw it and the boy just thought it was a normal thing. I told my boss but sadly as far as I'm aware nothing was ever done. They moved the boy to another daycare right before I quit.